Among the first to respond to the calls for help were members of the Jefferson County SWAT team. These are special weapons and tactics teams. They take the most dangerous assignments, and tonight, Dayline Stone Phillips talks with Captain Vince DiMana and other members of the first SWAT team on the scene. This was really a makeshift outfit. Right. Some had equipment, some didn't have that much equipment. What kind of protection did you have with you? The soft body armor that officers wear underneath their uniforms. Yeah, I had my off-duty weapon with me. That's Captain DiMana there in the blue shirt. As they made their way toward the front door, they knew they were facing bombs and booby traps. That they were on the roof, that they were in the front of the school, that they were in the back of the school. We didn't know where the suspects were. Worried those open front doors could be a trap, they found another way. They split up. Six men ducked in to establish the first foothold inside the building. Remaining with the truck, Captain Damana headed for the sound of gunfire around the school toward the library. There was a little girl there. We got to her first. Um, I picked her up. I was holding her in my arms, and I was starting to lift her. And uh, her head fell to the side, and I, I saw her wounds, and it was obvious she was mortally wounded. She was gone. So uh, I said, let's, let's get up to this, let's get up to the boy here. I got up to him, I saw he had a chest wound, and it looked like he also had a wound in his shoulder. I, I tried to talk to him. I said, so that's where the police were getting out of here, but we're gonna get you out of here. As they retreated with the boy, a homemade explosive device rolling toward them went off. I felt the warm, and I couldn't figure out what was spraying me in the face. It felt like gravel. This was shrapnel from a pipe bomb. Right. The scene inside made it extremely difficult to hear, to see, to communicate with one another. The automatic sprinkler heads were, were spraying. The, the area was flooding. Fire alarm had been set, set off, and uh, the real shrill, loud, piercing alarm was going off. There's a perception that the SWAT teams didn't move fast enough, waited too long to go into this school. There has to be a controlled, a controlled movement through there. You can't have, you can't have people, SWAT teams, running through a building uh, where you have both suspects and hostages that aren't defined. 